Hey everybody, welcome back to Pro Box and Insider Radio. I'm Chris Guns, and in just a second, I'm going to be joined by Michael Hunter, heavyweight representative on the 2012 Olympic team. See what he's thinking about before he leaves to London. Yeah. Michael Hunter, how you doing, man? Good, yeah, good. How you feeling? Good. I'm, you know, everything is going smooth. You know, I'm just uh, waiting and waiting to get, get to the village and and get back with my gold medal around my neck, you know? Yeah, I hear you. Tell us about yourself, man. Where where were you born? I was born in Van Nuys, California, but I'm from Las Vegas, Nevada. You know, I, I, I've grown up here. I've went all my school years. I did out here, uh, Vegas, where I'm at now. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, what, what kind of kid were you growing up? Um, I was very quiet, that's for sure. Um... I think, I mean, I've always been a good kid. I was, I always, I've never really had too much trouble, you know. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I was a kid, though, so I had a lot of fun doing doing stuff probably I wasn't supposed to be doing, but, you know, I was, I was simple. Mm-hmm. And you're the son of Mike the Bounty Hunter. He was a respected pro fighter. He has wins over Jimmy Thunder and Dwight Muhammad Cowie, Alexander Zolkin, former 84 Olympic gold medalist Tyrell Biggs. He dropped a close decision to Francois Botha. He beat Oliver McCall. Your dad made a mark in the sport, didn't he? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Now it's my time to, you know, uh, finish it. Finish it off. So, top, top everything off of what he done. Yeah, what, what do you remember most about your dad when he fought? Um, just how crazy he was. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, he was... Uh, I guess what you would say, untraditional. I don't really like to use the word unorthodox. Mm -hmm. uh, he was, um, yeah, I guess the untraditional type of fighter. I mean, on certain, you know, on certain aspects of uh, boxing. And he was uh, a lot of entertainment. So, you know, yeah, that was one of the things I remember most. You know, he would do crazy stuff like he would go uh, sit in the corner the other guy's corner, like, as soon as the bell rang, the guy would be walking, he would walk behind him, <laughs> he wouldn't even know he was behind him, and he would sit in the corner, and the guy would end up sitting on his lap, and he would end up talking to his trainer, <laughs> talking about how he's going to kick his butt and stuff. <laughs> I think that happened on TV, I think I remember that. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Actually, he did that for the Zulkin fight. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I know Zulkin wasn't prepared for that stuff. <laughs> that that <laughs> don't happen in Russia. <laughs> Did you did you did you want to follow your dad in the boxing or what was it your idea or did he kind of get you into um, it himself? Yeah, it was definitely my idea. He always like tried to steer me away from boxing, you know, just because of uh, you know the bad parts of the sport, you know, as far as you know the business side. Mm -hmm. But you know, I always wanted to be like him. So as a kid, and I was fascinated and infatuated with him and what uh, he was able to do in the ring and stuff like that. So, um, you know, that was one thing that, you know, that just I was turned on about. So, mm -hmm. but it was inevitable that I was going to do what I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. Were you good right away? Um, actually, yeah, I was. I, I had a, a, a lot of natural ability, you know. Um, I guess just, you know, from being in my family uh, for both sides, Boxing being in my family uh, from both sides and stuff like that, um, I had a, a lot of natural ability. So, you know, I, I was a big, big, I was a chubby kid, but, you know, I was able to go to work and stuff like that. I had good, good attributes for myself. Yeah. And who, who inspired you? Who, who did you see in the gym from day to day? Um, I would see, I would see people like, you know, Mike Tyson and, you know, uh, what have we just seen? Uh, those, not those, that was, uh, well, Reddick Bow and, and, uh, and my, especially my dad. My dad was, you know, uh, really, those guys really weren't, you know, as big as my dad was to who, to me, you know what I'm saying? So, but now that I look back, you know, I'm just like, wow, these guys were, were legends, um, you know, themselves, you know what I'm saying? So, but, but my biggest thing was just what, what my my dad was able to do, you know. Yeah, yep. It's priceless that kind of experience, though. Getting 
to learn from Tyson and Riddick Bowe and stuff coming up. Priceless. Yeah. 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 At 18, you got to the top of the. You, you made it all the way to the final round in the National Golden Gloves tournament. How'd that feel to miss out on the gold at that time? Were you were you devastated by that? Oh man, I was hurt, and it was funny because uh, before a couple of fights before, I'm like, man, it, and it was it was like my I only had like nine fights. I made it I, I, when I went in there. I had six or something like that in the tournament. You know, I was fighting guys with a lot more experience and been around for a few years, and I was beating them. I mean, it wasn't easy, but you know, I, I wasn't. It wasn't like I thought it was the time I thought I was going to have. So I was like, man, if this was going to, I was going to be, I'm going to breeze through this. And then I ended up losing. And I was like, okay. So it gave me a reality check. And I'm glad I, you know, I didn't really win because I would have probably had the big head. Yeah. So I, I was already starting to get it in the middle of the <laughs> tournament. <so. laughs> and you almost made the, the 08 Olympic team too. What happened? Who's responsible for you not making that team? Um, me for sure, for sure. I mean, I mean, it was a lot of uh, things that uh that happened. You know, that I, I wasn't, I had no control of. Like, you know, I got a food poisoning, my one of my qualifying fights and stuff like that. And uh, you know, I got real sick and stuff, and certain stuff like that. But um, I had a, I was really upset too. I had a clear mind, and uh, but I definitely wouldn't blame nobody but myself. Yeah. So, so at that moment when you missed the the O eight team, you it kind of devastated you at that time. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Definitely. Um. I was devastated because I I was so close on I was so close from yeah. getting to, getting to be on the team, you know. Yeah. And then I like I said, I got food poisoning, so I wasn't able to uh, you know continue. And I I was just that close, you know, from making the team, uh, from actually being in the high and. Then they had did the, the team a little differently. Uh, you know, I trained with the, my, my teammates for the whole year, you know, so I had a good relationship with these guys. Yeah. And what was your total amateur record, Mike? You, you, huh? What was your total amateur record? What is it now? Uh, I want to say 90 and 10. And that's great. Yeah. When did you yeah. qualify for the team? Say that again? When did you qualify for the team? Um, It was a... Probably a few months back. Uh, let me uh, stop it. Uh, I was in Brazil at the last uh, America's qualifier. Yeah, what, what, yeah, what day was that? Uh, that I qualified for the, the team this year. Right. Yeah, like May, in the in the month of May. Mhm. Mm That's great. Man, how'd you feel when you found when you when you won that fight and you you were in the Olympics? You made the team. How'd you feel when you made the team? Say that again, I'm sorry. How did you feel when you made the team? What about it? How did you feel? How did I feel? Yeah. Hello? Hello? I am here. <laughs> How'd you feel when you made the team? Um, uh, well... I felt a sense of relief, but not satisfied, you know, because, um, you know, I still haven't got that gold medal, and that's, that's my final mission, so I just try to take everything, every fight, every moment, one, you know, one day at a time, you know. Mm -hmm. hey, when do you leave for London? July 14th. Are you nervous at all yet, or is it too soon? No, no, I think, yeah, it's too soon. I think when I really get to the village and I start seeing all the other, you know, athletes at the top of their game, I think that's when uh, it's going to finally kind of hit me. Yeah. And I'll be, I'll be a little, uh, a little starstruck. And, you know, I, I'll be going through a whole bunch of different uh, emotions. Yeah. And what do you think of the 2012 class as it relates to past teams? Um, well, I think uh, we, we're a good team, and we have a lot of uh, talent, but I think our chemistry is, is, uh, as a whole, as a team, is what's going to uh, get us over uh, in London, you know. I think we're going to make a, a lot of medals uh, because of our chemistry as a, as a team together. You know, I know when, when you step in there, you're in there by yourself, but I just think, you know, I just we have this little spirit about us. As far as the other past teams, you know, uh, and the relationships.
Right. Yeah. Do you feel any any pressure on you because you're kind of one of the favorite ones to medal? Is, no, is there any extra pressure on you being that you're a favorite to medal? Um. Yes. It, I mean, it's extra pressure, but uh, it, it's good pressure. You know, I only can do my best, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. So, um, and, and when I get, when I step in the ring, you know, if I'm at I'm at peace and I'm at home. So. I, I think it will be pressure, but when, when I step in the ring, it will it'll be, it'll be the same as any other fight. Mm -hmm. And one of the great things about amateur boxing is traveling. Where's, that's all. Right. Where's some of the favorite places you, you got to travel and been, a part, and been able to see? Are oh, you breaking up, Chris? Um, I would have to say, uh, well, the last trip was uh, really good for us because a lot of all of us qualified except for one of the guys. And, um, you know, that just made, you know, everybody get to qualify, um, except for the, the three that had qualified before. You know, that, that made us a lot more closer, and, um, you know, it just let us realize how close we really were to each other. So Brazil was a cool trip for me. Now, there's a lot of people wondering if you'll live up to the moment. They might not know, but you already got a lot of sparring in with the heavyweight champ of the world, or at least one half of the double-headed dragon. You sparred with Latimer. What, 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 I sparred with Chris, uh, both of the brothers a few times. And how'd you do? Uh, well, I did very well, you know. Um, they're, they're, they're at the top of their game as, as professionals right now, so... And, um, you know, I, I, I was there, I ended up being their chief sparring partner uh, a few times in camp, so a couple times, so I had to say I did pretty good for myself, That's which great. gave me, you know, a total uh, boost uh, of confidence and, um, you know, uh, yeah, self-confidence. And did they, did they tell you what a good job you're doing? Did they, did they express that to you, too? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah, they did. Um, Vladimir, he really liked my speed and uh, my uh, my heart, you know, the, the determination that I had in the ring, you know, to try to get him out of there, you know, because, uh, you know, a lot of the guys he was uh, punishing, so, but he just really liked, you know, he liked my spirit, so, and me and him, me and Vladimir had a, uh, a pretty good connection, you know, where we had a, a good bond, so. Yeah. What, what countries do you have the most respect for? I'm sure the Ukraine. Uh, what countries do you have the most respect for? I'm sure the Ukraine is one of them. Um, well, you have to respect Cuba as far as you know, because they have had longevity. You know, uh, so, so as a country, I would I would say you know the, some of the Soviet Union uh, countries, uh, as far as like Russia, and they always have a good team. You know, um, people that that's had longevity uh, in the country. And there's even new guys. You know, uh, new. Uh, New um, countries that are that are doing well, you know, there's like there's, um, that that haven't done so well in the past, like Ecuador and stuff like that. Um, a new couple of faces as far as the country is concerned. So, yeah. so I think it's, it's going to be a good show. Yes, it will. Um, I guarantee. In the Olympics. You will. And who would you who would you rather fight? Who who would you feel good about having a fight? Is there anyone that that? That, that um, you had good success yeah, the with? World, the, the last guy who won the world champion, uh, he, he's the world champ. Uh, he, he, he was from Ukraine. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like I said, I was always, I would always love to fight a Cuban because, uh, you know, just of their uh, reputation, uh, the rep they have. So I would always, I would love to fight a Cuban. And, you know, and a guy from Italy, his name is Clemente Russo. And uh, he's been a uh, um, he's been on the scene for quite some time now. So uh, those are the main three people I would like. I'd love to uh, get in the ring with. Uh, if you if you do win the gold, how how do you think it'll feel standing up on that stage, that podium as the anthem plays for you? What do you think it'll feel like? Well, it's funny because when I when, when I sit on the podium, I got gold in, in the qualifier. I, I'm not only qualified, but I end up getting I end up winning the whole tournament. Um, I got a, a sense of like a glimpse into the future, you know, um, sitting on that podium. I, I was telling myself, man, I, I, it was a good feeling. But I was saying when I really get on that on that real big stage, I, I'm probably gonna break down in tears for sure. Yeah, yeah. It'll be overwhelming. <laughs> What do you plan after the Olympics? You're definitely gonna go pro. Oh man, um, 
you don't be heavy. I'm gonna give that heavyweight tech title, you know. <laughs> that's um, right. That's right. Uh, and I want to bring, I want to bring a lot of, a lot of, um, you know, some of that Prince and I flavor um, into the, in, back into the uh, sport of boxing, that entertainment mm -hmm. side, you know, um, yeah. what, what, what we're missing, you know, uh, get people to come back. So, and I got a lot of. Uh, a few things I want to work on as far as being in the ring as as my craft is concerned um, is you know bringing the people co to come back as well. So I got I got you know, once I turn pro, it's going to be a, a lot of fun for me. I think that's going to be my uh, my funnest moment is um, after these games, you know, and I'm going to be able to really let my I'm going to be able to really express myself without being held back. Yeah, you you like the pomp and circumstance. You're gonna you're gonna love being in London. They yeah, oh yeah, they know how sure. to celebrate. <laughs> and what's your favorite Olympic boxing moment? And your favorite oh. winning fighter? Um, I would have to say um, Roy Jones and his loss at the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you know he was just so great. And, you know, you could see it was a plain out robbery, but the way that he just came out in the pros and, and the way his uh, career blossomed from that was uh, something I, that was really, really uh, enlightened for me. Yeah. And what do you have to say to your fans at home? I know you got a lot of them. Um, I just want to tell Tell them to support me, and um, you know I'm doing this for the, for them. You know, um, bringing them back, bringing them back the gold medal to Vegas, and I hope they can watch and tune in. I'll right, we'll be watching and tuning in. Thank you, Michael Hunter. Appreciate it. Good luck in London. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Take it easy, Michael Hunter, U.S. heavyweight representative in the Olympics 2012. London will be there and we'll be watching. Thank you, Michael Hunter, for joining us. On behalf of everyone at Pro Boxing Insider, and follow me on Twitter, Chris Number Two Guns. Thank you.